Hello, it's Tash from Foxes and Brown Bears Tarot and today's video came from a comment by Hazel Drain Tarot to my last video where I looked at all my new decks and she mentioned that she quite liked the Sacred Sites Oracle cards but wasn't sure if how similar they were to the Earth Power Oracle and so that gave me the idea to do a comparison video so here we go so the earth power oracle is by stacy demarco published by blue angel and the sacred sites oracle cards are by barbara mickle john three illustrated by yuri leach and published by watkins so what are some of the key differences well first of all you can see the size of the box so if box size is an issue for you, that could make up your mind. Now the Earth Power deck has 41 cards. The Sacred Sites has 53. Okay, so if you someone who likes the bigger decks, then go for this one. Now they both come in lovely two-piece boxes. Super sturdy little boxes. Ooh! And that's how not to unpack a deck. All right, and you can see here that there's just a slight bit of room left in this Sacred Sites box. And with this one, let's get another book. And here you can see for this one, there's quite a lot of room in the box now there's actually less room than that because i have actually trimmed this deck so originally the cards looked like that but i thought that they popped a little bit better looking like this okay so i might get rid of the boxes so we can get into it all right so first of all Let's have a look at some of the cardstock. So, I'll show you the backs for each of them first. All right. So, they're the backs. I really like the backs of the Earth Power deck. And this, I find it very pleasing. I find it super pleasing. It just draws your eye into it. Um, I don't know if it's the best back for the type of deck, but as I said, it's really non-obtrusive and unobtrusive, and it is satisfying to look at. All right, so in terms of cardstock, they are both glossy. Let's see, both about similar gloss, so not much difference there. In terms of cardstock size, this one, I mean, they, this one definitely feels a bit thinner. Um, so if you kind of try and you look at that, this is that, but very similar in the end. This one's more flexible. These feel more flexible. These feel a bit less flexible, even though they feel quite thin. Now I actually need to mention that I have trim I have edged this one in a bronze so it doesn't come like that. Alright, these are not edged at all. Okay. So and both come unedged completely in the actual deck. And my fox has gone off camera. Alright, so looking at the type of cardstock. Now, with the Earth Power, it's that gloss that kind of sticks together a little bit. So, they're actually quite hard to shuffle. These ones are glossy, but they stick a little bit less, although they still do stick. So, if you're deciding between the two decks with regard to cardstock, it's really much of a muchness. So, just go with the deck that appeals to you most. Don't pick it based on cardstock because they're very, very similar. Although, I have to say, if you're not going to trim the border on this one, it is a bigger card. 
So you can see that it's a bigger card even when, even without the border. And, and I guess if you're going to trim this one, then this one's still going to be a smaller deck. So if you like big decks, go for this one. If you like small decks, go for this one. All right. So I've mentioned the borders. Now in terms of art, this one is pretty much just a collage deck. So you can see. So it incorporates photography from the site and then has some art overlaid on it as well. So it is beautiful. It's very aesthetically pleasing. Very well done. All right, so this one is all actual drawings, as you can see. Okay, so they're, they're really, really beautiful. So there's a lot more symbology going on in this one. There's a little bit more going on in terms of an intuitive read. So if you like reading symbols, if you like looking at heaps of details, then this deck's great for that. All right. If you like artwork, actual just drawing, go for this one. If you like collage decks that are really well done, go for this one. If you like popping color, definitely this one. This one's a bit more subdued, as you can see. All right, so. Now, as you can see, the other difference in these cards is that the Earth Power has the name of the place, the site, and then it also has a affirmation. So for Angkor Wat here, you have, I have the courage to live my heaven on earth, as above, so below. I'm aware that sometimes things must fall apart to be reborn as I would wish. This one, the sacred sites, does not have any kind of meaning um, or affirmation. It's just the name of the site and just the artwork. So, now, in terms of the books, the Earth Power book, as I said, is bigger than the cards. But that's a very standard Blue Angel approach. There's Stacey DeMarco. Now, what it does in the book, okay, so it does give you a nice little contents page. And then it goes, gives you an introduction, which is quite interesting about places of power and connecting with the places, the genius loci, which is sort of the spirit of the place. So very cool. And, and then it tells you how each card is described in the book. It gives you some actions based on uh, what elements that particular site is attached to. So, for example, if it's an earth site, you can stand barefoot on earth. Um, you can wear greens, things like that. And it gives you some information on how to use a deck, so dedication. And then it also includes five custom spreads, so which are pretty cool. All right, so now I haven't actually used these spreads for this deck because I don't use this deck as spread for spreads, but they are really cool spreads anyway to use with other cards. All right, so then you have the particular cards depicted. Now these are all black and white, and as you can see, you have quite a bit of information there. So what you'll generally have is you'll have the picture, the card, the site, you'll have the same affirmation that appears on the card. You have the key energies of that card. So in this case, got compassion, past lives, enlightenment, journey, and beauty, GPS, location, primary element associated with it, and a description of the site. Now, the description of the site is more about what it looks like, what its symbolism is, what not. So it's not an interpretation of the card. And then it will also give you suggestions of what to do when you visit this particular place. Okay. And so that's pretty much what it looks like. And then it's got a bit of information on the author. 
and some of her other works. So that's the guidebook for Earth Power. Now the guidebook for Sacred Sites, beautiful little mats book. So it's quite thick, but probably quite similar in the end because of course it's smaller to fit that particular box. And all right, so what it does with this one is it divides the cards in two directions. So whilst the Earth Power deck is just organized alphabetically, this one divides it up into North, East, South and West. Now note that this doesn't necessarily correspond to, to continents. So for example, if you're looking at South sites, you might have, you'll have places in Africa and Australia and Cambodia, New Zealand, India. Um, so it's basically, she sort of decided, okay, what, what's considered South? And it's not even always quite south of the equator, but it pretty much is. Okay, so and and then west, of course, is generally the Americas. So that's pretty straightforward. East is the Middle East and Asia and north tends to be, of course, all of Europe, uh, but also Russia and, places like, and the USA as well. Okay, and then you've got a power card, which is Mecca in Saudi Arabia. So that's kind of the way it's organized. So kind of interesting. Once again, it also has an introduction about uh, Barbara's connection to place. It tells you what to do when you visit a sacred site. And tells you about the importance of protecting them and tells you how to read the cards. Now, this is really cool about this deck because each of the cards has three different layers. So if you're looking at the foreground of the card, which is at the bottom, you're looking at lower world and the past. If you're looking in the middle ground, you look at the middle world, which represents the present. And then if you're looking at the top of the card, which is sort of your background, it's your upper world, which symbolizes potential and so the idea is you'd be looking at the card and then just seeing what intuitively draws you most and depending on where you are focusing you will be reading different meanings all right it also tells you about sort of a dedication and how to study it. it does talk about the three worlds so really kind of cool so past is things that come from childhood past lives um, so unlearned, unfulfilled lessons. So present is about the energy today and issues that you need to deal with now. And potential is really about the unfolding of the soul and it's about your next step in your journey. Right. And then it kind of looks at the different cardinal directions and explains the power card. So the idea is the power card emphasizes the message of the next card you select. And so that's kind of pretty cool. And I'm not quite sure why she chose Mecca for this one, but I suppose it is kind of in the center of your traditional world map. Um, so, and it's kind of the Middle East is sort of where, where you have sort of Africa, Europe, Asia joining together. So that kind of makes sense. All right. And then you go in and they organize by cardinal direction. And then for each card, you'll have the site and energy focus, which is a bit like a keyword. So illumination it tells you the location of the site. And then it gives you an, a divinatory sort of interpretation meaning for lower world, middle world and upper world. It's also black and white. And, and then each of the cards then will have either a journey. So this is sort of almost like a shamanic type journey that you can do. Or some of them have ceremonies that you can perform. Some of them have prayers. Some of them have invocations 
for particular deities. And so you just go on and on that way. And they also here you got Invocation of Athena. And like here you have a prayer to Kuan Yin. And here you have Creating a Sanctuary. Journey of Self-Realization. Incantation of the Earth Mother. Visualization. More visualization. Working of Spirals. And creating a medicine wheel. So it's got heaps of really cool information. And as you can see, it does have a good four pages per card. It's a very cool little book. Okay, so that's pretty much what you're getting with the books. So now in terms of the division of sites around the world... Because something that I'm looking for, if I'm looking at a sacred site deck, is I want to make sure that it does draw from places around the world. And it's as diverse as possible. Alright, so I thought I'd do a little bit of a tally. Okay, so now both of them have a mix of natural and human sites. Now, those human sites could be actual constructions like a cathedral, or it could be a site that is just altered. So, you know, like a standing stone or something. All right. And natural sites, of course, could be canyons and plains and mountains and things like that. So they both do those. All right. Okay, so in terms of Africa, they both have five sites from Africa. Okay, so that's equivalent, although if you think that this deck has, you know, 12 more cards than this one, then possibly a couple more African cards would have been kind of cool. Alright, in terms of Asia, and for Asia I've included the Middle East, and so it's quite a high tally, because I thought that technically, I guess it's part of Asia. All right, so in terms of Asia, the Earth Power has 11 Asian cards and Sacred Site has 19. So I guess that's eight more. So that's quite a significant portion of the extra cards have been gone into, into that. In terms of Europe, this one's eight and this one is 13. So that's... That's on par, considering the different size decks, so that's pretty cool. North America, Earth Power only has five. And the Sacred Sites has 11. A lot, a lot of these are Mexico, and of course you've got all the Aztec sites and things like that, so that's pretty cool. And in terms of Oceania, now I've done Oceania because... I didn't just want to say Australia because, of course, you've got all the Pacific Islands and Micronesia, Polynesia, places like that. And so Earth Power has four, which is pretty cool. Um, quite a few of those are Australia. And the Sacred Sites has three. And from memory, I think it's one from Australia, one from New Zealand, and then one is the Easter Island. Okay, so once again, this one's done a better job of Oceania, considering it's a smaller deck, but that's not surprising because this is by Stacey DeMarco. South America, this one has four and this one has two. So this one's quite sparse in South America. Um, it's really not hitting a lot of them. And this is the this is the lowest count for this deck. And considering it is a larger deck, I would have liked to see a couple more sites, like places like the Amazon and that aren't represented. So anyway, now let's they do have seven sites in common, which is pretty interesting because out of okay, 41 possible common cards. There are seven only, so that's not a lot. 
And so I've paired those up to show you first. Ooh. And I just shook the whole camera. All right, so as you can see, I've picked out Angkor Wat already. And there you can see, pretty obvious one, I guess. It's rare to not get Angkor Wat in this type of deck. See these stick together a little bit. Um, another one that appears is Delphi. And so that's kind of cool. So I like the know thyself there. So quite a different depiction across those. Whereas the Angkor Wat ones, obviously, it's a very traditional depiction. Um, all right, Glastonbury is in common. Once again, I guess they were both going to show the tour. I like the actual symbolism in this, but then again, this card is so beautiful. Just that light in there is so gorgeous. You can feel the magic flowing. All right. Gobleki Tepe, which is in Turkey. And once again, you still have the same stone depicted, but just very, very, very different depictions. They're both beautiful, I have to say. Really, really beautiful. This one's just a gorgeous photo. Oh, sorry. Uh, Machu Picchu. Very similar in terms of angle and everything. But once again, two very beautiful depictions of Machu Picchu. And I don't even know which one I like more. Hmm. I mean, I love the colors in this deck. I really love the colors in this. But then again, I love the symbols in this one. So I like them for different reasons. And I love how this deck also incorporates those, all those different like shapes and, uh, what's not shapes? It's like borders, but they're not borders. You know what I mean. Uh, they both depict Mecca. And of course, showing them Kaaba. So, very cool. I mean, this one very clearly gives you the symbology. I like the two um, towers there. And of course, a very close up of the Kaaba. This one, of course, though, the colors are extraordinary. And you can just feel the power in this. The colors are just, oh wow, amazing. Right, they both illustrate Uluru, and once again, I mean, the colors of Uluru are just gorgeous anyway, and that's so beautiful, but I really like this card, love this card, I love the pastel -y kind of colors, I love the rainbow serpent depicted here, um, it's so beautiful how it's incorporated elements of Australian Aboriginal art. All right. Okay, so now the other thing I want to mention about the Earth Power deck is that it has four cards that are not really associated with continents. So first one is mag the Magnetic North Pole. It's kind of cool, really like this card. And the other one is the Magnetic South Pole. And then it has these two cards, which I think are super cool. Because what it does is it includes my favorite place and my backyard. So the favorite place is really a place that is unique to you, that you resonate with. Your backyard is your home. Okay, so it's and it's the idea that you, you can find sanctuary every day in your home because your home is sacred to you. It holds your energy. And so I love those cards because you can really see yourself in those. And what's kind of cool is the book actually gives you space to write in your personal meanings, your description of these particular places. 
So that's a nice addition, addition to that deck. All right, so what I thought I'd do quickly now is I'd go through with like a sample to show you exactly what the book says about each of them. And so I've just gone with some very standard sides that most people have heard of. And so we'll look at Troy for Earth Power, which is in Turkey. And should be easy to find because it's in alphabetical order. Okay, it's a gorgeous card. You can see the Trojan horse there. Um, you can actually see the ruins of Troy photographed. And you can see some of the Greek writing in the background, if you can just see that. So that must be depicting the Iliad, I'm guessing. And there you can see a really cool little affirmation. To exchange my gifts ooh, with the world is a positive act. Teamwork is necessary. Whilst I can learn from the stories of others, I can create my own mythos. Beauty is eternal. Revenge has consequences. So that's kind of cool. So teamwork, I guess, in terms of a war. Yeah, that makes sense. But also that idea that beauty is eternal. And that you can create myth all the time through stories. And also the idea, of course, that going, going to war over Helen clearly had some very severe consequences for both sides. All right, so the book. So once again, picture, you've got the affirmation. The key energies for this are exchange, revenge, heroism, teamwork, mythos, dreams versus reality. GPS, location, Turkey, primary element is Earth. And then the description is, Almost everyone has heard the story of the Spartan beauty Helen and her lovely face that launched a thousand ships to war. Homer's immortal tale of power, revenge, loyalty and battle still inspires creative film, poetry and art. Homer's classic, The Iliad, tells us how the whole of Greece gathered a massive force to bring Helen home from the arms of the Trojan prince Paris to her rightful husband Menelaus. The dire bloodthirsty war, the fate of Achilles and his friend Patroclus, the fight for Helen and the eventual fall of Troy through the wooden horse full of Greek soldiers are all part of the eternal story. Yet is it just a story or something real? Human occupation on the site of Troy began in the early Bronze Age, which is the late 4th millennium BC. The first defensive wall around the citadel on the site was built around 3000 BC. Due to its ideal position for trade, Troy expanded, making it one of the largest towns in the Aegean region. It was a rich and busy place. Goods imported from Mycenae and elsewhere in Peloponnese give an indication of its powerful trading role and it was geographically ideally situated as a strategic meeting place for war and administration. Troy has gone under the names of Walusa, Hittite, Ilion for Greeks and Ilium in Latin. And so three and a half thousand years of habitation on the site have left behind layers roughly 15 metres in depth. There are almost always archaeological digs here and the wealth of relics gathered on the site has confirmed the siege of Troy by Spartan and Achaean warriors from Greece in the 13th or 12th century BC, amongst other historic happenings. So the Troy described by Homer was real. When you step on the land here, you feel the echoes of the ancients. While the site, age of the site is one thing, to me it is the unmistakable feeling of the pulling together of greatness that has the most impact. This is a land where gods walked on earth, where the best of the best came and gave of themselves. A place where the latest wonders, ideals and ideas were traded. To walk here as modern people, place our feet in the footsteps of our most illustrious ancestors and encourages us to create our own life mythos. We all have our story to tell, but first we must live it and create it with courage and daring. So when you visit, read the Iliad before you go. <laughs> a big ask. It is a very, very long epic poem. This is a big site and the surrounding landscape too contains a spread of other prehistoric and historical places, including Hellenistic burial grounds, mounds, whole cemeteries, and both Greek and Roman ruins of trading villages. It is here that you see the Hellenic burial places of heroes, such as Achilles, Hector, Patroclus, and the mighty Ajax, and you may wish to make an offering to them if the spirit takes you. I recommend a simple sprig of rosemary or a few bay leaves with a small amount of olive oil, 
definitely are the markers. Okay, so there's no divinatory meaning, there's no interpretation of the cards represented here. Though you can use the keyword, and of course, you can use the affirmation. Huh. All right, that was a long one. This one's longer. All right, so I chose Petra for this one. It's because I love that card. Look at the colors on that one, it's gorgeous. So you can hear, you can see heaps of stuff going on here. So let's have a look. All right, so if we have a little look, you can see that it's depicted in East. So you've got Jordan, page 122. So it's pretty easy to find, though it isn't as easy as the alphabetical one. Okay, and so the energy focus for this one is exploration. Um, I always think of Indiana Jones when I think of Petra, so which actually fits exploration perfectly well. All right, so locations in Jordan. All right, so then it gives you the lower world interpretation. So this is the past. So you are greeted by the two winged lions that protect the sacrament of Al Utsa the goddess daughter of the of Allah. She was worshipped in pre-Islamic times by the Nabataeans, the Arabic tribe that suddenly gave up their nomadic ways to carve out their capital at Petra. Many have questioned what underlay this great change and ponder exactly how it was achieved and by whom. The Nabataeans began to produce amazing sculptors, artists and architects and created one of the wealthiest and most beautiful cities of its day. Unprecedented change is possible for you too. If you have been feeling that you're simply drifting through life, perhaps you need to explore your ancestral history for inspiration and the revelation of truths that may indicate your hidden talents or show you your mission in life. And so you can see yeah, there, that's that foreground element of the picture. All right, so middle world present, you're looking at the building, okay? And in this case, it's the facade of the treasury at Petra, which is spectacular, but what lies behind it? Just as mystery surrounds the purpose of this site, so you have been blocked from discovering the whole truth about an important aspect of your life. Is there something you disguise about yourself for fear of letting the world know your truth? Maybe you're insecure, but pretend to be the life and soul of the party. Or do you hide your spiritual awakening from those who are close to you, afraid of losing them? This card presents itself to you now because it is time to acknowledge the part of you that you have not yet dared to examine fully. Whatever your hidden ambition, take a step toward fulfilling it. If you have always seen yourself as a healer, for example, try attending a workshop or joining a like-minded group of intuitives. Or simply start by treating yourself to a holistic therapy. Many avenues are open for you to explore. And then... If we look at the upper world, so that would be that sort of medallion. You can see that's not very clearly because of the gloss. And that's potential. So Al Utsa and her sisters, ooh, Al Ladet and Mandet, can't pronounce those, together form a trinity, the triple goddess, maiden mother crone. Al Utsa, known as the strong one, was revered as the goddess of the morning and evening star, Venus. The old gods and goddesses have been replaced by new ones, and the sun and star deities have been honoured by many different names. The triple goddess, too, is revered in many forms. Your previous persona is about to change. If you are willing, be courageous and accept the challenges, opportunities for travel, and new friendships coming your way, as you will all help to mature and live authentically. If you live in harmony with who you really are, you will find life far easier to navigate, and instead of struggling, You'll have more time to discover its hidden treasures. This card also indicates that numerology, study the power of numbers, has special meaning for you right now. So what this book does is it gives you a little description of what's the card showing, but it also gives you that meaning, the message, the interpretation. And in this case, you have a little journey. So... Imagine that you're walking into the city of Petra as it once was. Look around. Enjoy the vibrant colours. Smell the city's aromas and sense its warmth as you gaze upon the magnificent architecture. A whisper on the breeze calls you. 
It is al Utsa who beckons you as you enter the holy treasury. Feel the power of this deity who shines like the luminous star that she is. As you stand in her presence, her divine strength surges through you and you feel every cell recalibrate to the vitality of youth. Her demeanor is gentle as she advises you. Explore beneath the surface, dear one, for this is where the truth lies. Take responsibility for discovering the truth in all situations. There is always a purpose, whether it's selfish or for a greater good. What is your purpose to be? Use your wisdom. Sometimes the universe only reveals a small piece of the jigsaw, but there's always a bigger picture. Allow it to come together. Put your trust in the great mystery. Okay, so that's what you can expect for each of the cards. So that took a while, but I thought it was kind of interesting because if you are deciding between these decks, knowing what the book says could be very helpful. So ultimately, take home message. The Earth Power deck definitely tells you more about the sites so it gives you a lot of the significance of the sites it's and it's really useful as an affirmation deck i think and if you like colors go for that one and this one on the other hand the sacred sites focuses more interpretation so if you want just an oracle deck for one card draws in the morning or anything like that then this is your deck if you like symbols and actual artwork go for this one so hope this helps to be very honest i kind of like both and the fact that they only have seven sites in common means that i have no issues with having both but if you did have to choose hopefully this has helped a little and has at least given you some information so you can make the best possible choice. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Take care.